Hello everybody. I hope you guys are having a great day today. Today's video is going to be my empties. I have this big laundry hamper just full, absolutely filled with products that I finished up within the last six months. So the last video, the last empties video I did was in June, I believe, and that was worth like $600 worth of product. So we're going to go through the last six months worth of empties. I will have a running total down at the bottom for the like dollar amount of products I finish. I hope you guys are having a good day. I am very excited for this video. With that being said, let's just hop into it. So I just dumped everything out because as I go through it. I'm going to put it back in the laundry hamper. I have a few things that I don't have in person because when I went to Vietnam, I finished up the products and I didn't feel like bringing it back just to have the bottle. So to save space in my luggage, I just wrote down all the things that I finished. The first two things I want to talk about are the Kristen S shampoo. I will put pictures up here for you guys and the conditioner. I liked this well enough. I was in Australia and Vietnam for five weeks total. So in those five weeks, I ended up finishing the shampoo and the conditioner, partly because I was gone for quite a while. I was also sharing it with my friend in Vietnam. And in Vietnam, it's like a, a little luxury spa thing to have your hair washed. And so when you get your hair washed, they use quite a bit of your shampoo and conditioner as well. I'm not sure I would repurchase either. I feel like they did a good job. And when I was getting my hair washed in Vietnam, I did like how soft my hair was after the fact. But I don't think it was that shampoo and conditioner specifically. I think just the way that they wash your hair, like my hair just felt a lot softer. I don't know. It's a good shampoo if you are looking for like an affordable shampoo. I just think I have others that I still prefer a little bit more. The shampoo still lathered nicely. It was slightly clarifying, which I thoroughly enjoyed as well. Like, I don't think I necessarily need to have that shampoo. I do think it was a good option though. So I did end up finishing those two. I also finished up a mini of the Necessaire body wash. This mini came in a kit in a set with some other minis. I liked the body wash well enough. I had this in the eucalyptus scent. I like the scent a lot, but I don't think it's a body wash that you like need to splurge on. For me personally and my preference, I like something that lathers a little bit more and I don't think the necessary body wash lathered as much as I would like. It smells nice. It is a luxury for sure. You definitely don't need to be spending that much money on a body wash, but the scent is nice. So maybe I would repurchase it, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it for me. I have a full size of that same body wash still that I'm working my way through. So I think after that, I think I'm good to call it like quits. I don't think I'd repurchase that. I finished up this Function of Beauty conditioner. This is the one specifically made for straight hair. I don't think I would repurchase this. I don't necessarily think it did a ton for my hair. I finished the shampoo in the last six months, so I don't know. It's fine. It's, it's a nice enough conditioner, but again, I don't think it was like revolutionary or did anything revolutionary for my hair so I probably wouldn't repurchase it. It's not super expensive though. Maybe if I'm in a pinch I think I would prefer the Kristen S shampoo and conditioner set over the Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner set though. I also finished up this body wash. This is from Olay. This is the Ultra Moisture Coconut Oil Complex B3 body wash. Wow. I actually did really like this. It felt very hydrating on my skin. It starts off very like creamy, but if you really work it in, it does sud up a lot. So I would definitely repurchase this. I liked it. I liked the scent of it as well. I'm currently working on a different body wash, like I said, but I really, really liked this. I would definitely repurchase this one. I actually have quite a few hair things in here. So the next two things I finished up are from Amika. These are the Cure Bond Repair Shampoo and Bond Repair Conditioner. I actually loved these. I thought these were so, so good. I never felt like my hair got super greasy super quickly. I liked the way they lathered. I liked the way they smelled. Just overall really happy with the way that my hair looked while using these. I know it's expensive, but I would consider repurchasing this only during like a Sephora sale though. I think, again, you know, maybe not worth 
the full price but on a sale on a discount i think i would repurchase them out of the few shampoos and conditioners that i've talked about so far this was definitely my favorite of the ones that i finished up the next thing i finished up is this set of wax strips from v they're fine they're wax strips i use these on my armpits specifically i prefer to wax my armpits and it's just so much more convenient to have the wax strips I do think I still needed to go in with like tweezers afterwards to get every single hair mainly because my hair is really thick but I would repurchase them again I've only ever tried these wax strips and the flamingo ones I do want to say I like these ones more than the flamingo ones I only have a couple more hair things the first one is the Batiste dry shampoo I do like this I do think it does a really good job of like absorbing the oils in my hair but it does leave a white cast so if you have super dark hair you know keep that in mind i feel like my bangs are not are not banging the way that i want them to bang today i do like this i would repurchase this i have repurchased it in the past but it does leave a white cast i feel like when i do use this i can usually just like scrunch it out and it's fine but if you would rather just not see that at all maybe avoid this it smells nice i think that it's the best oil absorbing dry shampoo i have but like i said it leaves a white cast so there's like a trade-off there the other dry shampoo i finished up is from ava nyc this is the freshen up invisible dry shampoo i will say it is pretty invisible but it doesn't do as good of a job as absorbing the oils so again take it or leave it if you don't have super oily hair like i do then this might work for you really well i love the scent of this as well the bottle is just also kind of cute i really like ava nyc's packaging i would repurchase either one depending on how oily my hair gets both of them are honestly really good something else that i finished is from laxi 10 this is the amand shower oil so it's the almond scent honestly not my favorite something about this and the way that it mixed with my body chemistry smelled off to me i don't think i would repurchase it they did send this to me though so i i mean i used all of it up I know a lot of people love this it just wasn't for me I felt like it was hydrating it felt nice but again the scent of it was off the next thing I finished up is this tree hut blue lagoon shea sugar scrub love a good body exfoliator I like the tree hot ones I do feel like the scents are nice and they do a really good job of exfoliating my skin if you have super sensitive skin probably not the best for you because it is fragranced and you know it's like a rough abrasive on your skin but I liked it. I have another one in my shower right now in a different scent. And I just always have like a body scrub on hand. So I would continue to repurchase this. I have repurchased it several times. Finished this up as well. This is the last shower thing I have to mention. So this is from Body Prescriptions. This is the Detox Shower Steamer Mint Eucalyptus. Um, I got this at TJ Maxx, I believe. I don't know exactly how much it is because I ripped the sticker off I don't think these did anything for me I really feel like the the scent was barely there it didn't like fill up my entire shower either I would not repurchase these I think they were kind of gimmicky I know that there are other shower steamers that maybe work a little bit better but these did not do it for me I have a couple of different cleansing balms here I have three of them the first one I finished is the Peach Lily Ginger Melt Oil Cleanser. I actually really liked this. I feel like it did a really good job of breaking down my makeup without leaving a super oily residue. When I cleanse, I always do a double cleanse regardless, so if there is an oily residue, it usually gets taken away by that second cleanse. I liked this. I would repurchase it. I do think it's kind of expensive for what it is, but I do like that it is an oil and not like a balm, like these other two i feel like it makes it a lot easier and it, if you don't have to like melt it down to get it to work i would maybe repurchase this if it was on sale but i like i said 40 dollars for a cleanser or cleansing oil seems like maybe maybe a bit much this next cleanser is from pharmacy this is the green clean cleanser in the peach thyme scent this came in a pack of three i believe and i got this a couple years ago 
but Pharmacy's Green Clean used to be my favorite cleansing balm. I have since found a lot more that are better, that are less expensive, so I don't think I would repurchase this one. The scent of it was nice. I do think it does a good job of breaking down makeup, but like I said, there are a lot of alternatives now that are just not as much money. So. I would not repurchase this if you want to like spoil yourself I still think it's good but you definitely don't need to spend this much money on a cleansing balm and this last one is from Bioma this is the melting balm cleanser Bioma did send this to me but I, tr I truly think it is such a good cleansing balm the one thing I don't love about Bioma's packaging is how bulky it is like I could never travel with this because it is so big but i do think it does a really good job of breaking down makeup it it really melts into your skin and it doesn't take a lot of effort to melt i like this so much more than the pharmacy one the pharmacy one can kind of leave like chunkies not chunkies that's not the right word but like it doesn't melt all the way down like the bioma one does so highly recommend this it's one of my favorite cleansing balms and it's relatively affordable you can get it at Target and Ulta and I believe it's under $20. This is not necessarily a skincare empty but I'm gonna include it in here anyway. It's just the Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap. I use this to wash my brushes. It did its job. It's not super expensive so I would probably repurchase it. Not much to say. I do feel like it did a really good job of cleaning my brushes. I have two different sets of pimple patches here. The first one is my Kazarex Pimple Patch Master. I feel like I've finished one pack of these every single time I do an empties video. Minimum. I think these are really good. They suck out all the juices of your pimples so I really like those. And I also really love the Hero Cosmetics. These are like the micro dart ones. In the beginning stages of a pimple, you're supposed to put them on. I use these for my hormonal acne, the ones that are like under the skin that are super painful. And I do think they do a good job of getting in there. I have repurchased this. I will repurchase this and I will definitely continue using them. And I like them a lot. They are kind of expensive though. You only get eight patches in here. And I think the pack of eight is like around $15 which kind of seems like a lot to me but I do really like them I think they do a really good job of like helping my under the skin acne resolve itself faster the next thing I have here is from Beekman 1802 this is the milk wash exfoliating jelly cleanser so I did not love this for my face I didn't like the scent of it it does have like particles in it that are supposed to be like physical exfoliators I didn't love that for my face, but I did end up using this on my body, especially on like my back and arms where I feel like I get a lot of acne just from like sweating a lot. I do feel like this did a good job of minimizing that, but I did not like this for my face. It's also kind of expensive, so probably would not repurchase this, but I did finish it. I also finished up this from Bioma. This is the brightening toner. I, it's completely empty. This was a perfectly nice toner. I liked it. Again, by almost super affordable. I believe they sent this to me as well. The one thing I will say is that the opening for the product to like pour out of is kind of big. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're putting this like on your hand. The way that I applied this was just putting a little bit on my hands and kind of just like patting it into my skin. I don't really use cotton pads because I one find that they're either wasteful or two I'm just too lazy so I'll just put a little bit in my hands and then like pat it in I liked this I'm currently working on some other toners that I I desperately need to get through but I, I did enjoy it and it is pretty affordable so I would probably repurchase once I finish up some of my other toners the next thing I finished up also from Bioma is the hydrating serum it, I think it's a perfectly nice serum I don't know if it's my absolute favorite I still think I prefer my Coco kind ceramide you, you know the one the one that I always talk about I like that one over this one so if I were to go with a more affordable serum I would definitely go with the Coco kind one but this one was still nice I still enjoyed it and I still used it up I don't necessarily think I would repurchase it though just because I do love my Coco kind one so much more than this one I have a little set of the peace out acne healing dots these are also just pimple patches this was a sample so this only came with four 
acne healing dots instead of their usual pack. I like them well enough, but the CauseRx ones are my absolute favorite, so I don't think I would repurchase these ones. I think the CauseRx ones are just so good, and they're a little bit more affordable than the Peace Out ones. I have a couple of different like hand creams here, or just lotions in general. The first one is from Flamingo. This is the Daily Moisturizing Lotion. I did like this. I don't know if they have bigger sizes of this because this is just like a three fluid ounce one. I thought it absorbed nicely. I thought it smelled nice. Would probably repurchase it, but I have a lot of moisturizers and just body lotions and body products in general that I need to make my way through, so I don't think I'm going to repurchase it anytime soon. The next one is from Bath & Body Works. This is the In The Sun 24 Hour Moisture Ultra Shea Body Cream. It is just a body lotion, like I said. The scent of it was nice, maybe a little bit too strong, but if you're buying like body lotions from Bath and Body Works, I feel like you kind of expect the scent to be a little bit stronger. I don't purchase from Bath and Body Works that often anymore, so I don't know if I would necessarily repurchase this one, but if I were to get gifted like a Bath and Body Works lotion, I would still use it. And then the last thing I finished up in terms of like body care is the, this is also from Bath and Body Works. This is the Aromatherapy Stress Relief Hand Cream. I always have a hand cream in my bag. I like the scent of this a lot. I do kind of feel like it left my hands feeling a little bit oily. So maybe not my favorite hand cream. I probably wouldn't repurchase this one. I have a couple more serums and then some sunscreens. This first one is from Acure. This is the Brightening vitamin C super fine mist. I actually quite liked this. I really, really liked the mister on this, especially it is extremely, extremely fine. It felt really nice. I would honestly repurchase this. I have been a really big fan of like face mists recently. I think this one is a great one. It's not super expensive either. The mister was so nice on this. It literally felt amazing. And I've been really into vitamin C lately because I have a lot of like hyperpigmentation from acne scars and I love vitamin C for helping me like helping reduce those a lot. I would I would repurchase this for sure. The next thing I have here is the Laneige Water Bank Blue Hyaluronic Serum. This is a little mini sample size of it. I don't think I would repurchase this. I think it was nice. I liked it well enough, but I feel like there are other hyaluronic acid serums that are maybe better, less expensive. Uh, like I said, this is just like a little sample size of it, but I don't think I would purchase the full size. I think there are other hyaluronic acid serums that would not be as expensive. And the last thing I finished up is this serum from Sunday Riley. This is the CEO 15% Vitamin C Brightening Serum. I love this serum so, so much, but it is insanely expensive. I think the one fluid ounce bottle is like $89 and I cannot justify spending that much money on a vitamin C serum. So I have been on the hunt for a different vitamin C serum that gives the same effect that brightens my skin as well as the Sunday Riley one does. I don't know what they put in this besides vitamin C, but it is crack. It is so good. I have been... <sighs> I've been looking for a dupe or an alternative because $90 for a serum is just too much money. I love this though. I have seriously I have seriously considered repurchasing it because I really miss having this in my skincare routine, but $90, that is that is quite pricey. Even though it is $90, I would repurchase it. I just haven't found any other ones that have compared to this one, unfortunately. That is actually so, so sad. I also have a hand sanitizer here. This is the Touchland Hydrating Hand Sanitizer in the, well, this was the lavender scent. I think these are nice. They're kind of expensive for hand sanitizers. $10 for a hand sanitizer seems like a bit steep, but I did like the scent of this. I do think it's fun to have this kind of hand sanitizer. I would repurchase it if it was on sale. I don't think I would ever buy it full price though. Usually Ulta does some like $7.50, some sales for like $7.50, which I would buy. But yeah, I don't think I would buy this full price. That seems kind of insane for a hand sanitizer. It does last a really long time though. I feel like it lasts a lot longer than like the, the $2, um, Bath and Body Works ones. And then I ended up finishing three sunscreens these last six months, which is kind of crazy to me. 
The first one I want to talk about is the Josie Marin Get Even Sun Milk. This is SPF 33. I don't think I would repurchase this. I didn't love it on my face so I tried to use the rest of it on my body. This is quite expensive for a sunscreen. I want to say it's around like $50 and I did a whole video testing different sunscreens and ranking them so I'll leave that linked if you guys want to see it but this was on the lower end of the sunscreens. I didn't love the scent of it either. Overall not that good of a sunscreen and I uh, would not repurchase this. Another sunscreen I finished up is this one from Black Girl Sunscreen. It's just the normal sunscreen with SPF 30. I liked this because it didn't leave an oily residue. It's very reminiscent of the Supergoop Play sunscreen screen in my opinion but not scented and less expensive. I liked this quite a bit but honestly I felt like it made my skin feel a little bit oil oilier throughout the day. I think this just has a little bit too much excess oil for my oily skin. I did like it though. I would repurchase this if I was to use it on my body. I don't necessarily love it as like a face sunscreen though. And the last one here is the Inkyless Polyglutamic Acid Dewy Sunscreen SPF 30. I wouldn't really consider this a dewy sunscreen. I feel like it's not that like glowy. There are definitely other sunscreens in my collection like the Hamish Artless Glow Base, like the Laneige one that leaves my skin feeling a lot more glowy and like hydrated than this one, but because it wasn't, I actually really liked the sunscreen. I would definitely repurchase this once I work through some other sunscreens in my collection. It wasn't super expensive either. I honestly think it's a really solid option. My makeup was more on top of it perfectly fine. Didn't leave a white cast. Just overall a really good formulation and not super expensive. I really liked this. I would recommend this and I would probably repurchase once I get through some other sunscreens. Okay and the rest of this stuff is makeup. So the first two things I'm going to talk about are these sponges. These ones specifically are like the velvety sponges and I just don't like the way these apply makeup. So I have one from Real Techniques and then one from Juno & Co. Yeah, I just don't love the texture of these. I don't think they blend out makeup very well and you know I don't really want to give them to anyone because I use them quite a few times but yeah not not a fan of the velvety feeling sponges. I would not repurchase these. I have an insane amount of mascaras. Several of these are actually like I've used them so much that I needed to get rid of them. Some of them are just ones that I didn't love that much that I didn't want to keep in my collection just to hold on to and then some of these have just dried out. So let's talk about the ones that I am getting rid of because I just didn't really like them that much. The first one is the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow. None of these hold a curl for me, just an FYI, but they don't really give me the lash effect that I want. So the One Coat Wow, I was expecting a lot of volume, a lot of va va boom. Did not get that, didn't love the wand, but it's mascara so I don't really want to give this to other people. So. This one definitely would not repurchase. None of these I would repurchase, I don't think. This is the e.l.f. Lash and Roll. This is supposed to be a Benefit Roller Lash dupe, I believe. Didn't really like it. Again, it didn't really give me that volume that I wanted, and it just wasn't anything, like, super special for me. So would not repurchase this. At least this one was, like, not super expensive, though. This one from Ulta Beauty. This is the New Heights Lifting Mascara. This actually did give me a lot of volume. It's smudged on me, and I have very low tolerance for mascara smudging on me. This wand is also, like, nice and short and kind of stubby, um, so I feel like I could get into every single lash. So if it didn't smudge on me, I would actually like this, but because it did, would not repurchase. And the last one is the Benefit Fan Fest Mascara. Again, it just didn't give me the kind of volume that I wanted. It has like that curved one, but didn't really do anything for me. So I would not repurchase this either. This next one is from ColourPop. This is from the Hocus Pocus 2 collection. This is the BFF mascara in the shade Butcherson, which was this really deep plum purple, which I thought was really pretty. I don't think ColourPop's mascara formula is that good though. I liked the color of it, but it smudged a lot on me. And because it's smudged and it's purple, it was just like very, very obvious. Obvious. So I think it's fun to have a color mascara, but I definitely would not repurchase this. Just, uh, it smudged a lot and 
you know, this is also pretty dried out. I've had this for over a year now at this point, so this needs to needs to go. Another one that dried out is the Rare Beauty Mascara. This is actually quite a good mascara, but I have found a different one that I like more than this one. So for high-end mascaras, I don't think I would repurchase this one. It doesn't hold up to the other one that I'm going to talk about in a little bit here. This is the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. This is the waterproof version. I thought it was fine. Not my favorite mascara. Yeah, I think it did an okay enough job of lengthening, but I prefer more volumizing mascaras than lengthening mascaras. So don't think I need this in my collection. Don't think I would repurchase it either. I think I've started to find my like tried and true mascaras and because of that, I feel like I'm not going to keep purchasing other mascaras. My mascara collection has been decreased a lot because I am starting to realize that like, I think I found my ideal mascara combo. This is the mascara that I was talking about that beat out my Rare Beauty one. This is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. I think this mascara is so good. It does such a good job of volumizing, but it doesn't leave my lashes clumpy whatsoever. I know they have a brown shade of this, which seems stunning. The only thing that I would say is kind of a downside is that it doesn't hold a curl. Most mascaras that are not waterproof don't hold a curl for me, so I don't really fault the mascara specifically for that, but it's easy to remove. I like the way that my lashes look with this on. I would definitely repurchase this, and for me to like make my lashes stay up, I just go in with a mascara base. I really, really enjoyed this mascara. I would purchase it again. The next thing I want to talk about is my Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. This is in the shade Brin, which is the black shade. I still have the brown shade that I'm working my way through, and I also have the blue shade of this mascara as well. This is a tubing mascara, so it doesn't smudge on me whatsoever. It doesn't hold a curl, so I have to go in with a mascara base underneath, but it's kind of hard to get your hands on and I feel like, especially lately, with me discovering my mascara bases, my K-Beauty mascara bases, I think I prefer the Tower 28 formula over the Thrive Cosmetics one. So I think my ideal combo would have to be the Pamel Essence mascara base, which I also finished and I'll talk about in a second, and the Tower 28 mascara. I think that is just chef's kiss. I do like this. I do still have a couple other shades of this, like I said, that I'm working my way through. So I would maybe consider repurchasing this, but I have found some others that either give me the same effect or a better effect. So I don't necessarily think I need to repurchase my Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions. And lastly, I want to talk about my Pamel Essence Mascara Base. This has been such a staple in my collection. I would definitely repurchase this. I purchased a different mascara base to try out and I don't like it as much as this one. This one is just so, so good. I think I need to buy this one again, but I, I still have the other one. The other one is like brand new still, so I don't think I can justify buying this one right now, but this is, this is my go-to mascara base. This plus the Tower 28 Make Waves mascara, so good. And the Tower 28 one does not smudge on me. So this to hold up my curl, the Tower 28 for the volume, top tier combo, honestly. Um, especially if you have Asian eyelashes like I do that get weighed down really, really easily. And it doesn't smudge. Seriously, just a great combo. We'll definitely repurchase the Pamela Essence Mascara Base. And then I have a few like actual makeup y bits here. The first thing that I finished was through my project pan. This is the Kosas Brow Pop. This is their brow pencil. Not the micro one, but the one that has like a triangle tip. It was fine. It was just a brow pencil. I don't necessarily think I need to repurchase this brow pencil. I have a few others in my collection right now that are the exact same thing as this one. So probably wouldn't repurchase this. I do like the packaging though. I think the packaging is cute. I will say the only thing, the only time I think I would repurchase it is if I get the set that Kosas does every every year. The one that has the tinted airbrow, the clear airbrow, and the pencil. I don't love the clear airbrow that much either, but if it comes in the set, the tinted airbrow is my absolute favorite and it's usually like super on sale, so I'll just pick it up just because. But like I said, it's just, a, it's just a brow pencil, nothing revolutionary in my opinion. Speaking of the clear airbrow, I also finished up 
one of these. Um, you can see the packaging is like super disgusting because I would run this through my brows and like put this bully back in. I don't love how gross the packaging gets after a while of using it. I love the outer packaging though. I think the clear kind of like reflection-y material is really pretty but since the inside is clear you can see how like dirty the clear brow gel is in here. I don't love the brow gel that much either. It does like an okay job of holding up my brows but nothing that good, you know? I just prefer other like clear brow gels over this one so probably wouldn't repurchase unless it came in the set like I said because the tinted air brow has been my all-time favorite tinted brow gel lately. A another thing I finished up is the Maybelline Master Prime primer. This was also in my project pan. Would not repurchase it. I don't love the silicone feel of this. I don't really feel like it did that much for my pores or anything like that or I don't think it really blurred anything. I'm glad I finished it though because I've had this in my collection for quite a while now. A another thing I finished up via my project pan is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. I do have another shade of this that I have in my collection right now but after I finish that one, I'm not sure I would repurchase it just because there are other concealers that I think are either better or just easier to use because this is a pump that you have to like squeeze out onto the back of your hand. I would prefer just like a doe foot that I can draw directly on my face, but I do think this is a really good concealer. I liked it a lot. I liked it enough to buy two different shades of it. This one specifically is in the shade Golden. I liked it well enough. I don't think I need to repurchase it though just because I do have so many concealers and some of those perf some of those formulas I prefer over this one. So probably won't repurchase. Like I said, I still have another one in my collection so gonna make my way through that one as well. I did like it. It's nice and affordable. It is, I will say, very satisfying to like see how much product I'm actually using because it like pumps up, you know? Don't think I would repurchase it. A really good concealer though. Another thing that I, not that I finished it, but it dried out a lot. This is the Danessa Myricks Twin Flames Multichrome Pigment in the shade Crazy For You. I love this for like inner corner highlighting. This one is beautiful. I have a full size and a different color. This is a mini size, just a stunning product. I love the Danessa Myricks Twin Flames little liquid shadow things. Like I said, I have another shade of it. Highly recommend. And I did repurchase the other shade. So these are beautiful if you love just like a really duochrome look on your eyes. It's stunning. And the last thing that I finished up in the past six months is this blush. This Rare Beauty blush mini rare beauty blush in the shade joy if you guys followed my project pan series whatsoever you guys know i was working on this for an insanely long amount of time and i finally finished it so i'm really happy about that i think it is a really pigmented product the only thing is i don't love this shade so because it's so pigmented you really don't need a lot of product to put on your cheeks and so it just took me a really 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 long time to finish this i'm glad i did i'm glad it's out of my collection i think the rare beauty blushes are very hyped up for a reason i do think they're good blushes i don't think i would repurchase this shade specifically I know I have one in my collection right now in the shade Happy, I think. This took me so long. I'm so glad to finally be rid of it, honestly. I can't wait to actually take this out of my collection and just like throw it in the garbage and not hold on to it for any longer. I was hate panning this for so, so long. Honestly, very proud of myself for working through this for so long though. It was it felt like a year that i was trying to finish this up and it's a mini size imagine having the full size blush i would i don't think i would ever buy a full size wear beauty blush to be honest and those are all of my empties i am so glad that i managed to finish up all of these products i feel very proud of myself for being able to do that i know a lot of this was like skincare hair care body care which is typically what happens i don't finish up makeup that often usually in my project pan series my goal is to just hit pan on it so you know it's nice to see some things being fully used up makeup wise as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video i am glad that i was able to finish up x amount of money that i will put on the screen for you guys worth of products i feel like that 
was a lot. But yeah, I'll have I'll have the total here. I am very proud of myself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.